from Television City in Hollywood, we bring you the Jack Benny Show with his special guest, Humphrey Bogart. Thank you, thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the uh, Lucky Strike program. You know, I, uh... <laughs> really, you'll, ha you'll have to excuse me for laughing, but I just spent the most wonderful half hour I've ever spent in my life. I was listening to my own radio show. <laughs> and I don't know, I... I don't know, I was so comical, you know. <laughs> I said so many funny things. Oh, I know what you're thinking, you know, but I believe, I really believe that a man should be honest with himself. If there's anything I hate is when a comedian is great and won't admit it. <laughs> I've never met one like that, but if I did, I'd hate it. <laughs> and one thing about me, Lady, I'm honest. I really am. You know, if any other comedian, if any other comedian has a bad show, I'm the first one to admit it. <laughs> I talk about it all the time. <laughs> but I, um, oh, I have my faults. You know, I'm not, I'm not perfect or anything. I, uh, you know, I'm too easygoing and I'm not overly ambitious. But then after all, I... I don't want to be the, you know, the richest man in the world, you know. <laughs> America is big enough for me. <laughs> but you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight, you know, I announced three weeks ago that tonight Mary Livingston was going to be on my show, you see. But unfortunately, we had to postpone it because there was a big mix-up and everything. You see, when the producer asked Mary to be on my show, I told Mary to ask for a lot of money, you see. You know, I forgot that I was paying for it. <laughs> so, instead of Mary tonight, we have Humphrey Bogart as our guest star. And, um, really, I'm getting him fairly reasonably. <laughs> you know how tough he is on the screen? You know what a tough guy? knows nothing about business. <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all. Well, anyway, this show that I'm going to do... Jack! Well, Jack! Jack. Jack. Yeah, what, what is it, Bob? Jack, I want to talk to you a minute. What is it? Well, I just heard that you talked with the producer and there's a possibility of my song being out of this show. Yeah, well, look, uh, Bob, the reason for that is, see, this show is very, very long, you see, and we had to make up our minds whether we take out your song or my jokes, you see, and then we thought we would do what was best for the show. Oh, well, then my song is in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Bob, we felt that it would be much more important, you see, to leave in my jokes. You mean your jokes are more important than my song? Yes. Yes, my jokes stay in and your song goes out. Well, that's like keeping the smog and throwing away Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> keeping the smog and throwing away Los Angeles. Yeah. Pretty clever line, isn't it? Yes. Well, yes. it's in my next TV show. I'm on TV five times a week. I thought you were tired. <laughs> Let's see that. Now look at Bob. Your song is out, and that settles it. You see, I'm running this show. I'm the boss. It's my show, and I'm running it, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Well, that's what the critics said about your last show. <laughs> what? Said Bob was good, Jack was bad, and the audience was indifferent. <laughs> look, Bob, go and get ready for the play, will you? All know? right. <laughs> you know, I can't understand. He's the toughest guy to get along with. You know, he's only been with me a short time, you know. And the only reason I hired him at all was because I wanted him, you know, I wanted him to introduce me to his brother, Bing. <laughs> then I found out he didn't even know him. <laughs> well, anyway, as I said, the reason, 
The reason that I've got Humphrey Bogart on this show, I want to tell you about the play that I'm going to do with Humphrey Bogart, is because my sponsor called me uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and my sponsor, he's an awfully nice fellow, and my sponsor told me that he had a feeling, you know, he likes my shows, he likes my TV shows very, very much, but he had a feeling that I wasn't doing the, the integrated commercials. He said I wasn't making the middle commercials in the show important enough, you know, and after all, I... You know, my sponsor's paying the bills and everything, and he has the privilege of making suggestions, you see. <laughs> of course, I, I don't have to take the suggestions. So I, I have the privilege of quitting. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to abuse the privilege. So tonight, tonight on this show, in case you notice that we stress the commercial, you know I'm doing Jack. it. I'm doing it because... Jack, what's this I hear about you writing me out of the commercial on this show? Yeah, well, Don, Don, look at... Wait, am I going to have trouble with you, too? You very well may. <laughs> oh, I very well may. Well, Don, yeah. the reason you're not doing the commercial, see, is because I have another very important way of doing it. Now, just a minute, Jack. Yes. What's more important about the commercial than the way I do it? Look, Don, you don't fit into it this week. Oh. I, mean, I mean, hurting the script for the sake of your commercial is like... is like... <laughs> it's like keeping the smart and throwing away Los Angeles. <laughs> Excuse me. Look, now, Lady Jack, Jack, look, don't you know what my doing this commercial means to me? Now, after all, I'm not a funny man. I don't tell jokes. I'm not an actor. I don't sing songs. I don't lead a band. What are you paying me for? <laughs> Don, you're hanging yourself. <laughs> we'll talk about it later, huh? Oh, darn it! <laughs> the fellow been with me 20 years. I can't understand why I have so much trouble with everybody in my cast. But everybody. Always complaining. Always unhappy. I don't know. Maybe if I gave them more money, they... Nah. <laughs> Better they should be unhappy than me. <laughs> but anyway, well, we've got to get on now with the show. And ladies and gentlemen, now tonight, we're going to offer a real, real dramatic play called Babyface, starring Humphrey Bogart. On with the show. <laughs> This is the 24th Precinct Police Station, situated in the heart of New York's theatrical district. This is the detective squad room. Here, crime, with its quick, easy promise, is shorn of its flimsy veneer and revealed in its sordid, squalid reality. To this room come people from all walks of life, the flotsam and the jetsam, the hoy and also the polloi. <laughs> the man you see at the typewriter is Detective Sergeant Crosby. The man looking through the file, standing behind Crosby to his right, which would be to your left on the screen, or, uh, or to your right, and uh, his left, or... Well, anyway, he's Detective Wilson. And he's to everybody's right and left. You can't miss him. <laughs> the men who just came in are Detective O'Brien and a suspect he has just arrested. Well, where'd you pick this one up, O'Brien? I picked them up in an alley near the... <laughs> you know what I've done? I thought I was trying to start a fire in a warehouse. <laughs> he may be that fire bug we've been looking for. Take him up and let the captain have a look at him. God, get in there. Come on, get in there. <laughs> O'Brien was an honest cop. We could tell that from the clothes he wore. <laughs> Incidentally, my name is Lieutenant Benny. I should be arriving at the office any minute. Oh, here I come now. 
I took off my hat and coat. I hung them up on the hall tree. <laughs> I exchanged a few pleasantries with Wilson and Crosby. I had heard a funny story last night and I passed it on to the boys. Although I was a tough boss and a stickler for work, I had a lot of charm and the boys loved me. <laughs> I didn't see that. Hello? Precinct 24. Yeah? Detective Benny speaking. Just a minute. 385 Madison Avenue, eh? Window pried open. Uh-huh. Screen loose. No fingerprints. Must be the cat burglar, all right. We'll get him. Oh, the cat burglar again, eh? Yeah. It's the 15th cat he stole this week. <laughs> terrible. My cat's afraid to go out at night. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> hey, Lieutenant. Here's Officer Sweeney's report. You know, he went over to Brooklyn to pick up that strip teaser. The strip teaser? That was four days ago. Yeah, no, but Sweeney wants to make sure she's guilty before he brings her in. <laughs> I tried to arrest her myself, but I couldn't get anything on her. <laughs> Better fix up these files. Well, Slim Finger Sarah. <laughs> I caught her over at the automat. She was lifting the nickels out of the slots. She was. Again, eh? You can go, Burke. I'll take care of her. Come on. Take your filthy hands off me. Come on. I said take your filthy hands off me. All right, all right. Don't holler. This ain't the first time you've been pinched. You're telling me I'm black and blue all over. <laughs> Hey, Lieutenant, wasn't she in here about a month ago? Yeah, she's the slickest pickpocket in the country. Operates all over town. Last time I arrested her was at the zoo. The zoo? Yeah. She picked a baby kangaroo out of its mother's pouch. <laughs> what made you do a silly thing like that? To me, a pocket is a pocket. <laughs> now make it easy on yourself and sign that confession. Maybe I'll give you a break. Oh, no, you don't. I ain't signing nothing till I talk to my lawyer. And besides, I'm entitled to make one phone call. These crooks know their rights, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello, Shirley. And yeah, this is Sarah. Yeah. And say, Shirley, will you do me a favor? Yeah, run across to my apartment, will you? The mat, uh, the key is under the mat. And Shirley, uh, there's a pot roast down the stove in the kitchen. That's right. J just lower the gas under it, huh? Yeah, very low. I won't be home for 90 days. <laughs> Why didn't you call your lawyer? You don't like pot roast. All right, sit down. I'll take care of you later. Though you may forget me, you're still on my mind. Look over your shoulder, I'm walking behind. My song, they cut out. Maybe I'll say it for the that's new. But I shall wish again. Shut up, Bill, will you? <laughs> I was typing out a report on Slim Finger Sarah when the door opened. And there were Detective Simmons and Ross. They had brought in a vicious gunman, a killer named Babyface Bogart. <laughs> I 
I didn't mind the applause he got on his entrance, but I resented the fact that Crosby and Wilson joined in. <laughs> it looked like this time we had Bogart dead to rights. According to Detective Simmons and Ross, a little crook named Blinky Mason had been shot to death. They picked up Bogart a few yards from the scene of the crime with a smoking 45 in his hand. baby face, start talking. What do you know about Blinky Mason? I tell you, I ain't never heard of no Blinky Mason. Who cares if he was raised in a tenement and his mother said he was a nice little boy? Or his teacher, a sweet gray-haired old lady, cried when he graduated. And his brother, his brother owns a, owns a haberdashery store in Schenectady. I don't, I, I don't even know his girlfriend, a blonde dame that works in an aircraft factory. <laughs> or his boyhood chum that ran away from home and I went to Australia. Wait a minute, baby face. If you don't know Blinky Mason, how come you know so much about him? I seen it on This Is Your Life. <laughs> <laughs> what? Gee, gee how I cried when he brought in a warden that he hadn't seen for 20 years. <laughs> the warden? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you know they flew that guy all the way out from Sing Sing by TWA. Sound of baby face. You killed Blinky Mason, I'm going to get a confession out of you. Yeah, and how are you going to do that? Beat me? He very well may. Yeah. <laughs> when Mason was knocked off, you were standing there with a gun. And listen to this. I'm walking behind you. Turn that thing off. Now, what did you do with that gun? Now, wait a minute, before you start any rough stuff, I'm entitled to one phone call, ain't I? Well, yes. Okay, give me a dime and I'll run down to the drugstore. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. <laughs> You'll make that phone call right here where I can keep my eye on you. Yeah, and save a dime. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Shirley. Shirley? Yeah, well, listen. Listen, honey, this is Babyface. Yeah, well, I, I, I won't be home a little later. Oh, that's too bad. Now, what were we going to have for dinner, honey? Pot roast. <laughs> I could have told him that. <laughs> Why, that dirty crook. Yeah, yeah, now, now, listen. Listen, Shirley, I want you to do something for me. You go in the living room and over by the fireplace, and inside of the fireplace, there's two loose boards. Now, now listen, you lift up those boards and you stick your arm in and inside there's a package. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's my laundry. <laughs> yeah, listen, I want it back by Friday. Why didn't you call your lawyer? Because I don't like the way he does my shirts. <laughs> now, look at here. You killed Blinky Mason, didn't you? I didn't do it and I got a witness. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah! <laughs> Why don't one of you guys press it? <laughs> oh, uh, time for lunch. I'll go with you. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> You're not going to leave me alone with this guy. Get over there and sit down. All right, baby face. You can start talking now. I want to hear about that witness. What about him? Well, I... I don't know his name, but he was standing right alongside of me at the time of the murder. Oh, he was, eh? Yeah. Uh-huh. What was he doing? Well, he was, uh... He was just standing there. He, uh... He had, uh... What did he look like? Well, he, uh... Yeah, you know, he, he was a curly-headed guy. He was about five foot ten. He had, uh... He had a gray suit on and brown eyes. Oh, yeah? What color hair? 
He was bald. <laughs> Wait a minute. You said he was a curly-headed guy. That's right. No hair, just a curly head. <laughs> I ain't buying that baby face. Start singing! I'm walking behind <laughs> Not you! <laughs> Let's get back to that witness again. What was he doing? Well, he was, uh... He was holding a cigarette in his hand. Yeah? What kind of a cigarette? I said, what kind of a cigarette? Well, he was, uh, I, I ain't gonna talk. <laughs> I said, what kind of a cigarette? All right, all right. It was a lucky strike. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. A lucky strike, eh? What made you think it was a lucky strike? I ain't talking. <laughs> what made you think it was a lucky strike? Because it was so round, so fine, so fully packed, so free and easy on a draw. <laughs> Can you remember that, Wilson? Are you kidding? <laughs> One more question, baby face. What was he doing with that cigarette? He was peeling it. <laughs> Peeling it, eh? How'd you know it wasn't a banana? Because they let me taste it. It was a lucky strike, all right, because luckies taste bad. Fresh cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike, lucky strike. <laughs> What else? Nothing. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. No nothing beats better taste. <laughs> I knew we'd get him to talk. Lock him up, fellas. All right. All right, get him up. Get over there, you too. I swore to get you, Benny. But why? Because what? you've always, you never leave me alone because you've been hounding me just because I pulled a couple of lousy murders. What? <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I'm going to put a red eye between them two blue ones. <laughs> Where, where'd you get the gun? You didn't frisk me so good when I came in, did you? No. No, when I put my hand in your pocket, I found a dollar bill. I got so excited, I didn't look at it. <laughs> look, look at baby face. Look at, I'm not mad at you or anything. Look at, I'm, I don't want to die. Look, I'm too young to die. Honest I am. I'm a nice guy. I'll leave you alone. Everybody loves me. Everybody. You love me, don't you, fellas? <laughs> all right, all right, copper. Start praying. I'm gonna let you have it. Oh, yeah? I know your type, baby face. You're all alike. You're pretty brave with that gun in your hand, ain't you? Throw that gun away, I'll show you a coward. Okay. <laughs> How about that? Come on, Sarah, let's go get that pot roast. Be my guest. I'm walking behind. When the sketch was over, I found that I had enjoyed it even more than my radio show. I was laughing so much, I could hardly thank Humphrey Bogart for helping me give such a great performance. Bogie told me that he thought he had handled his role extremely well. He believes in being honest with himself, too. <laughs> then he told me about his new picture, Beat the Devil, with Jennifer Jones. 
Then I told him about the last picture I made. <laughs> oh, I, I almost forgot to tell the audience that I'll be doing my next television show in three weeks. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be with you three weeks from today. And I believe, I'm pretty sure my guest star is going to be Johnny Ray. You see, I feel that I'm responsible for Johnny Ray's success. Because when I offered him a job a long time ago, he asked me for an awful lot of money and I cried. And then he stole that from me. <laughs> so he's going to be my guest. Thank you very much. program were Sarah Berner and Benny Rubens.